Thank you, Father Mark. I'm Penny Burillo. I'm from Hart, Oceana County. I was born and raised there. And after two years at Central Michigan University, I traveled to California where I lived for nine and a half years. And I met and married a man from Mexico. And that was my first experience with the U.S. Immigration Department. Um, we went to Sula Juarez and we were able to obtain his papers as a legal permanent resident. As Martha said, back in the 70s, it was a lot easier and a lot different than it is today. I've been a bilingual teacher's aide and I work for the Department of Human Services both in California and Michigan. Um, I lived in the Valley in Texas for three and a half years. I lived down farther south than Martha in Rio Grande City, which is in Star County, the poorest county supposedly, next to Hidalgo in Texas. I've had the privilege of working with hundreds of families. I've helped them fill out applications, translate documents, attend um, interviews at the immigration office. I've worked with a consulate in both Suda Juarez and Bogota, Colombia. I've had the privilege of assisting two son-in-laws, a daughter-in-law, and a grandson through the immigration process. I've also had the privilege of having Father Ron as my pastor for about 15 years. And I've gone to Mexico, I've gone to Peru, I went on a mission to Peru, and I've been to Colombia. So I have a vast experience with different people in different parts of the world. Um, it's been very rewarding to work with those people, to walk in their shoes, to see their reality. And I'd be glad to entertain any questions that you have for me. Thank you. I'm just going to stay put. You're stay there? Yeah. <laughs> My name is Liz Balk. I am the regional attorney at Justice for Our Neighbors, which is a nonprofit in Grand Rapids and Holland through the United Methodist Church. Um, the first United Methodist Church in Grand Rapids and Holland are my clinic sites where I hold monthly clinics for about eight to 10 clients each month where we host um, an intake um, and hospitality-based uh, intake system. Um, Justice for Our Neighbors was created in 1999, um, but in West Michigan we opened in 2006. So we've been around for a few years and our mission is basically to provide free high quality legal services to immigrants who meet uh, poverty guidelines. So 200% of the poverty line or below. And on top of just providing legal services, we also are dedicated to welcoming the sojourner um, into our community, into our churches, into our workplaces. And so that's why we don't just take clients in on sort of a rolling basis. We want um, volunteers to come and hear the stories of the immigrants. We want immigrants to come and eat with us. We want them to bring their children. And so we provide childcare at our clinics. And so it's not just kind of cranking out immigration cases, it's more um, a holistic look at immigration in our, in our community right now. Um, in addition to that, um, I also, my job is also to um, come and do public speaking events, advocacy uh, for immigration reform issues, and, um, and also I go into the Calhoun County Jail once a month and do Know Your Rights presentations to the ICE detainees, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement detainees who are there, just to sort of, I can't take all of their cases, of course, although they all beg me to, but I can at least give them advice on how to present themselves in front of a judge, um, if they have to represent themselves, what defenses they have available, and um, what sort of proofs they need to bring to court with them. Um, and in addition to that, uh, we also, um, I guess the, the, where, how I came to immigration was in 1999, I was a um, full-time volunteer with Catholic Charities, actually in St. Paul, Minnesota, and sort of just was thrown into um, an immigration advocacy legal clinic, sort of like Justice for Our Neighbors um, in St. Paul, and sort of fell in love with the immigrant community and just the gratitude with which they, they, uh, they, 
that sort of poured over people who were interested in listening to their stories or helping them with their with their immigration process. And so ever since then, I've sort of been involved teaching ESL or uh, volunteering somehow, and eventually went to law school. And um, after a couple of years of doing personal injury and car accident cases, I was fortunate enough to get a pro bono case through Justice for Our Neighbors, um, the prior attorney, um, Susan Reed. And uh, that type of case was called a special immigrant juvenile case. And that involved a young boy from Honduras who jumped on a train, jumped on a bus, walked, uh, hitchhiked, whatever he had to do, all the way up to, um, to the United States. And, uh, and my job was to help him get through the legal jungle, both locally with the Kent County Circuit Court, the Immigration Court, and the Immigration Service. Um, so again, f fell in love all over again with the immigrant population. And then about a year and a half ago, I was hired in as a regional attorney. So that's about it for me. Okay, the question was, if, uh, could we clarify what kind of services, social services, immigrants are qualified for? Because there's a big myth about the fact that the immigrants coming to this country are draining our social services using our tax dollars. Um, does anyone on the panel want to specifically address that? You know. I know that. I do too. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, you're DHS. <laughs> Um, well, we know for a fact that in the real and the valley where, we come, where I come from, um, and, that, and, and it's because I have relatives, my, my cousin, um, I have relatives who are you know, undocumented, um, they don't qualify for any services themselves. The only way that they can qualify for some, maybe food stamps and maybe uh, uh, Medicaid is their children if they are born here in the United States. But the person, the people with no documents are not eligible to for any um, any um, services from the federal government. Because it's very clear that they ask for social security. And so they don't not um, qualify for any services. Um, that is myth. Um, the other thing that I didn't touch, and we do in our, is that a lot of the people that we work with, they, they file an income tax, asking for a, a number that the government gives to the people who don't have social security. Uh, and a lot of the people pay and the social security, even if they don't have documents, which is that's something that you don't hear a lot about. They, I know for a fact there is millions of dollars that undocumented people every year contribute to our social security. People with the money they are never going to get back. Okay? And that's something that people don't talk about. It. But they don't qualify for any services. 